What's good, what's good? I'm Victor Niglio, and welcome to a new episode of Production Pearls, my YouTube series where I share my best pearls of knowledge for music production. Even though I'm working in Logic Pro, most of these tips and tricks are applicable regardless of what program you're using. Before we hop into today's episode, take a second to like this video so we can fight the YouTube algorithm together by upping video engagement. And of course, subscribe on YouTube if you enjoy my content. I have new uploads Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We have new episodes of my mix show Jiggy Jams on Mondays, alternating uploads of Gwent Guru and Production Pearls on Wednesdays, and new music every Friday. Finally, if you want to show your support and unlock exclusive rewards, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash victorniglio. You can sign up for as little as a dollar a month and get unique rewards like mixing and mastering services, personalized track feedback, remix stems of my songs, one-on-one -on -one production sessions, and so much more. If you can't afford it, then show your support by sharing this episode on your social media and with your friends. All right. So for this episode, I want to talk about riffs and melodies a little bit. When I was learning music production and songwriting, one of the most elusive and mysterious elements to me was writing a good melody. Well, actually, I could write good melodies, but I couldn't keep them interesting for any amount of time. I would write one or two bar passages and simply repeat it over and over, which never quite worked out for me. Even though many popular songs seem to do the same thing, my tracks always seem to sound dull after the melody repeated a few times. So, of course, I went in the complete opposite direction and began writing very long, complex 8-16 to 16 bar melodies. Of course, that also didn't work out either, because the idea of the melody would get lost after a few bars, leaving the listener unable to easily follow along. Well, you're probably wondering, what's the trick here then? And it's actually devilishly simple. Essentially, what you want to do is evolve your melody or riff as it repeats. And what I mean by that is we subtly change notes in each successive passage. Now, I like to have my changes towards the end of the phrase, but you can change any part of the passage as long as it works contextually. So, let's take a look here at a new track I'm working on. During the intro, verse, break, and build, I feature a cool melody that I wrote that can demonstrate this concept nicely. But we're going to start with the original melody idea that I had before I wrote its evolution. Now, I have the MIDI of the piano up here just for the example to follow along, but here we go. This is the original melody idea that I had in the context of the track. cool. <laughs> but I'm sure you noticed that after the first repeat or two, your ears and brain got bored in a way with the exact same repeated melody. Now, let's take a listen to the evolved version after I adapted the melody to the rest of my tune. Listen to how the melody changes at the end of the phrases. Sweet. Of course, this track isn't done, but you can see it's got some cool potential. Did you notice that the melody stays interesting even though you just heard it repeat 8 times over 16 bars? If we take a look at the MIDI, it's easy to see how very simple it is to vastly improve your riff or melody. All I've really done is added 4 notes, 4 notes, to the entire 8 bar passage, so that the melody plays once. Then it plays with a small change, right here. Then it repeats the original melody. But since it repeats after a change, the ear perceives it as a melodic change. So it keeps it interesting. We're kind of tricking 
our ears into thinking that it's moving along more than it is. And then the melody plays a fourth time with another small change, seen here. In terms of music theory, I've simply utilized the minor third and the minor sixth as a way to resolve back to the root note of F. Let's just take another quick listen of just the piano playing the very simple beginning and evolved versions of this melody. So here's the original. doesn't even really sound right anymore now that you've heard the evolved version, right? Let's hear the evolved one. As we can hear, the results are night and day between the original melody idea and the quote-unquote evolved melody. This technique can work with any phrase, riff, or melody for any instrument, synth, or percussion. It can also widely be applied to your overall song arrangement, but I'll get to that in another episode of Production Pearls. Thanks so much for tuning in, and subscribe on YouTube to never miss a new episode. If you like the video and want to support, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash victorniglio, and sign up for as little as a dollar a month. I hope you learned something new today, and I'm happy to have shared another pearl of knowledge with you. As always, keep it jiggy.